Okay. Okay. So, Hi, Laura. He's uh, too bad that we cannot see you, Luca. We don't understand what's the issue tonight, but still, at least people can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, still start. So uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Luca. Uh, Luke, to everyone listening, Luca is a teacher of physical therapy in, at the University of Florence, and tonight is going to hold a webinar, clinical webinar for us. And it's going to be about the practical management of swimmers painful shoulder. He's going to start from explaining the etiology, going through diagnosis and finally treatment of this particular disease. So Luca, uh, how do you feel? Are you excited? Are you ready to start? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to start. Thanks, um, Laura. Thanks to all the participants to attend the webinar. Um, uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, the swimmer pain for shorter. And I think this is a great opportunity to share this uh, type of a problem. And um, yes. um, about, uh, we will start with uh, talking about uh, uh, definition of swimmer shoulder is the general terms that describe the problem of shoulder pain in swimmer. Uh, Kennedy and Hawkins coined this term in 1974 to describe the impingement of the subspinatus tendon, uh, causing particular by the repeated uh, abduction and inflection of the shoulder. And um, um, about some numbers, uh, competitive swimmer uh, usually exceed the um, 4,000 stroke per shoulder in a single workout. Uh, is a very important amount of quantity. Um, so the, um, each swimmer must uh, log between uh, 60,000 and 80,000 meters per week. And um, it's important to understand that the power of propulsion of the freestyle, uh, there is 80% from, from the stroke and 20% from the push with the lower limb. And uh, as we know, we are a small uh, um, difference uh, uh, within the other style. For example, uh, we have 50% uh, 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 about proportion of stroke uh, for the breaststroke, 70% for the butterfly, and 75% for the backstroke. And we know that uh, the style are not all the same uh, in the freestyle. We have an, imp uh, an impeachment, but the impeachment is uh, limited by the torsion of the torso uh, that is present in the pull-through phase. In the butterfly style, uh, we have a great importance um, of scapular stabilized muscles uh, for the recovery phase, a lower limb uh, to go forward. In the breaststroke, uh, we have um, a reduction uh, about the tension of rotator cuff uh, in the pull-through phase. Uh, uh, thanks to the limited movement of the shoulder in the craniocaudal direction. And uh, for the backstroke, uh, torsion of the torso and extra rotation of the arm, concentrated stress is mainly on the anterior capsule and less on the rotator cuff. But uh, if we um, uh, pay attention in the freestyle, uh, we know that freestyle stroke can be divided in, into six parts. If uh, we start with the head entry, uh, we have the maximum elevation angle uh, about uh, the four uh, reach phase. Uh, the swimmer use a body roll to increase the normal range of motion. And it's very important to observe the middle pull through phase and the pull, uh, the pull through phase because um, it's a phase in which may appear the pain. So it's very important to assess this uh, phase. And about uh, an exit and uh, middle recovery, uh, we have an important work of scapular muscles, and we have the point of maximum relative external homeral rotation. So this is very important to assess this movement. About uh, uh, some problem, uh, we know that uh, in the pull through phase, uh, uh, we can have an excessive body roll uh, my senior five shoulder pain. And in the pull through phase, the swimmer with a painful shoulder uh, may allow the, to the hand uh, to exit the water before a complete adduction in the pull through phase. And so uh, the swimmer making the stroll less efficient. 
And um, uh, about the muscles uh, uh, during the uh, middle pull through phase, the serratus anterior muscle section is reduces dramatically. Uh, and the um, rhomboid uh, muscles uh, tend to compensate this movement, uh, resulting in a scapular destabilization. And um, uh, about um, uh, middle recovery, one of the really sign of possible injuries um, dropped elbow during the recovery phase. Uh, so it's important uh, to understand in which phase our athlete have uh, the problem. Uh, and when appears the pain, it's very important to understand how it's possible to correct the problem. And then um, it's important to understand that um, a rotator cuff tendinopathy is one of the problem about uh, uh, the swimmer shoulder. Uh, we have intrinsic and extrinsic axiological factors uh, about uh, extrinsic mechanism. We have to pay attention uh, in anatomical and biomechanical uh, aspect. For example, about scapular kinematics and humeral kinematics, we have to assess the pectoralis muscle length, scapular muscle performance, thoracic spine posture, glenohumeral extensibility, and rotator cuff muscle performance. It is important to understand that we have other extrinsic axiological factor uh, as misuse, overuse, disuse, and abuse. About abuse and excessive use of power-ups, uh, for example, and pedals, uh, is important that uh, we understand that um, if our athletes have pain, we, we, we have to avoid this type uh, of tools. If we want to summarize the causes, in subacromial impingement, or better defined subacromial pain syndrome, uh, we have also an excessive use and the consequent possible tendinosis of the sovraspinatus. We have muscle fatigue, we have scapular dyskinesias. We have also maladaptive postural compensation for our athlete. And we can have laxity and instability. We have two types of problem. We have um, uh, a decrease of range of motion or an increase, but is not a physiological increase, is a laxity or instability of the shoulder uh, that lead to damage of uh, uh, some anatomical part of the shoulder. And we have some problem about uh, biomechanics of the stroke and uh, uh, about biological and genetic factors. About the causes, I'm Ari uh, Danos Wimmer frequently uh, showed sign of a sovraspinatus tendinopathy. It is important to understand that the level of competition was uh, uh, correlated with the sovraspinatus tendinopathy. And about calf injuries should be considered in the older athletes. About the causes, after the pool training, the external rotation range of the shoulder and the pectoralis minor length uh, um, were reduced, and then um, the joint position sense detection error increased. So it's important to restore these two aspects, range of motion and the joint position sense of our athlete. And training a, a, a little level swimmer causes short-term maladaptive change in shoulder. So this is important to understand this factor and training our athlete uh, uh, because it is very important to understand that uh, some characteristic uh, is uh, sport specific. So it's very important to assess uh, these two type of a characteristic. About uh, uh, diagnosis and uh, uh, clinical evaluation, we have to assess the range of motion, the instability, pain, alteration in scapular rates, dyskinesias, and strength evaluation. We can see that uh, about range of motion, we can um, assess the range of motion about reductional alteration uh, with the device as biobit. The range of motion of both shoulders is important to assess an all component about range of motion, uh, flexion, abduction, all the component is important to assess. And uh, we can assess and understand that uh, we can have a reduction range of motion but generally, uh, swimmer have an increased internal and external rotation, uh, specifically if they have a stability of the shoulder. Uh, 
and is important also assess cervical and thoracic range of motion. It's very important because um, uh, shoulder uh, doesn't work uh, uh, in isolate, but work with the whole the body. And we can uh, see how this is, uh, uh, it's simple and fast to assess the uh, shoulder uh, movement. And it's important to understand that uh, our athlete uh, can have, uh, for example, constant feedback about the movement or about the range of motion. So it's very important to assess the start, starting condition of our athlete. About um, um, the clinical evaluation assessment and about functional rehabilitation, it's important to have a comparative about uh, between the shoulder and uh, the, the shoulder that had pain and the other shoulder. And we have to understand that uh, the total range of motion, internal and external rotation, total range of motion must be between 130 and 165 degrees. Specifically, external rotation must be more than 100 degree or not less than 93 uh, degree, uh, because it's often uh, uh, associated with impingement. Uh, so it's important to train to recover this uh, uh, type of total range of motion. It's very important that uh, uh, we understand that this is uh, uh, an important uh, aspect uh, uh, to do with our athlete. And about uh, range of motion evaluation, we know that uh, uh, we have a reduction in uh, stroke length and uh, we have a reduction in both uh, thermal rotation range and joint position sounds. And then this is, uh, uh, we know that uh, we have an important relations in between fatigue and potential mechanism of a shoulder pathology in swimmer. So it's very important to recover these two uh, expert range of motion and uh, uh, the joint position sense. And about uh, the diagnosis, uh, we know that uh, we have to assess instability, pain, pain with a specific test. We can, uh, start the some instability test that so could sign, uh, for example, or for example, we can uh, uh, do load and shift test in which we assess the anterior and posterior capsule or a, a relocation and an impression test in which we assess if our, uh, our athlete uh, uh, um, have a fear about the movement or we can assess the, the subacromial impingement uh, by neuro, neuro test, uh, as we know, or uh, with the uh, Hawkins uh, uh, Kennedy uh, test for subacromial uh, uh, impingement. Um, we, we have to do um, not only one test, well, we can to link this test with a, a clinical evaluation. Or we can do lift off test if uh, we think that our athlete have a sub -pro some problem about sub uh, subscapular muscles. Uh, if um, uh, we can assess if our athlete is able uh, to do this movement, or job test about subspinatus muscles. This is a classic test, and we can do also a variation of a job test. Uh, in which uh, our athlete, uh, uh, for example, uh, have a 90 degree uh, of flexion uh, about two is uh, only a variation. Or about uh, active compression test is a test for a slap lesion, uh, as we know in our uh, clinical practice. So it's important that we know all this test and we can assess this type of problem with a specific test. This is important to combine each other. About this algorithm of Mackins, it's important to understand that in swimmer shoulder, we have to assess the tenderness to palpation, but also no tenderness to palpation. And we have to assess, for example, the strength for our athlete. And also we have to assess the range of motion and uh, uh, understand if our athlete have a normal range of motion or abnormal range of motion. After we can do our training our athlete with the physical uh, therapy 
This is a, a common practice about this problem. For example, to recover range of motion. And about uh, uh, the diagnosis, uh, uh, and uh, mm, we can um, see that uh, about uh, uh, this kinesias, as we can see in the video, and the right scapula is in, very important to assess. It. And uh, it's due to, for example, a problem about uh, uh, pectoralis muscles uh, or about uh, an asynchronous uh, firing of the trapezius, uh, uh, specifically for the upper trapezium uh, in comparison to the middle or, uh, for example, uh, or low trapezius. It's very important to assess this type of movement. And uh, in, because this uh, problem can increase impingement and uh, uh, inhibits uh, serratus anterior activation, uh, which uh, lead to more imbalance uh, between the scapula stabilized muscles and um, an amplification of the cycle. Also, it's important to train our athlete uh, with movement and joint position sense. It's very important to do this type of training. And also it's important to do uh, neuromuscular evaluation as we can see in the video uh, about joint reposition test is very important to assess that it is also important is an exercise to training our athlete. And we can see in this speech that uh, we try to create an adapted joint reposition test. As we know, we don't have uh, the same condition in the water environment uh, or in the land environment, but uh, we, we can try to simulate uh, the water environment. Uh, we can simulate the movement, uh, for example, the stroke, and uh, uh, for example, training our athlete with joint position test in this position is uh, only a possibility to train in different way our athlete. And about the strength, uh, the classic isometric assessment with a dynamometer, uh, we know that the shoulder uh, external rotation and internal rotation uh, strength ratio was approximately uh, 0 0.70. And the shoulder internal and external rotation uh, strength ratio uh, must be less than 1.5, is very important. And uh, I, I don't know if you, uh, for example, use this type of uh, test, is ash test. It's a common test that um, uh, some athlete use in the rugby uh, athlete and um, uh, consistent to uh, push the hand in a strength platform in different position of the arm. And we can assess the peak of force and the force development rate. This is um, the possibility to test the strength of our uh, athlete and the swimmer uh, is um, very important um, to do uh, similar and create a similar condition that our athlete can have in a water environment. And also is important uh, to link this test uh, with the uh, neurocognitive uh, test and neurocognitive training. So we can use, for example, neurocognitive plank is uh, only an example in which we can use a, a different stimulation for our uh, athlete uh, is a um, different stimulation that create uh, not only uh, strength, but uh, only, uh, but uh, uh, in the same time, um, uh, in the same time, the training that to um, brain and the muscles is very important, this link. And about the treatment and prevention, the, um, we start with the pain treatment and functional uh, recovery. And it's important to choose a specific shoulder exercise. And uh, in the final part, uh, we do return to sport training. But if we want to uh, uh, divide this uh, uh, part of training, we have the return to participation in which the target is no pain and functional uh, recovery. In return to sport, the target is increased functional uh, movement, correct technical errors, and um, uh, do, for example, gratuitic export training uh, for our athlete. In return to performance, the target is performance specific training. So, this is very important uh, divided this type of progression.
for our athlete. And we can do pain treatment uh, with manual therapy, for example. Uh, it's very important um, to have a modulation about the pain. And um, uh, in another way, we can um, start with a uh, red. Uh, we increase uh, um, increase the range of motion of our athlete, uh, and um, uh, at the same time uh, do a joint position sense recovery. And this is important uh, exercise in which uh, our athlete uh, uh, have um, a visual and sound feedback. Uh, this is very important uh, because, uh, as we know, uh, we work with the brain, not to only with the muscles. So this is important to do this type of neural stimulation. And about the treatment, uh, um, it's important to treat the posterior capsule and uh, um, also uh, create um, a stabilization uh, a tra training about uh, uh, scapular muscles and strength training. Uh, about the treatment on posterior capsule, we can do as uh, we can, we have uh, uh, so above uh, a manual therapy or our athlete uh, can uh, do by hand self exercise, or for example, our athlete can do scapular stabilization exercise. For example, it's only an, an example, we can do uh, a lot of variation this type of exercise. For, ex for example, pro row exercise or prone extension exercise. Uh, it's important when I start this exercise that our athlete uh, uh, have the control of the scapula uh, because it's very important to understand that uh, first of all, the movement start to the brain and not to the shoulder. And about scapular stabilization, we can uh, do some exercise, for example, the lower trapezium exercise or superman exercise. And uh, um, it's important uh, to understand that we can increase uh, the difficulty of this exercise, for example, if we want to change uh, some position of our athlete. And about the scapular protection and core training, we can stand with an upper kinetic change exercise and we can see uh, in this pitch uh, by different stimulation uh, due to the, uh, about, for example, therapist that uh, uh, can uh, stimulate the movement uh, uh, and uh, the athlete uh, have to contrast the strength of the therapist. And uh, we can use also close kinet kinetic uh, uh, change exercise and uh, increase, uh, the dif the, for example, the level of difficulty of the exercise. For example, um, do some exercise on a rocking board. Or for example, this is a, a, a classic exercise that uh, we do in the final part uh, of the training. Uh, and uh, walk uh, uh, with the upper extremities with the leg resting on a football, for example. On the other end, in the second part, we have to uh, streng strengthen, for example, the rotator cuff muscles. And we start with isometric uh, training. Uh, after we go forward with the concentric and eccentric exercise, and we finish with plyometric exercise, this mode of exercise, should be integrated into the rehabilitation program. Um, for example, uh, uh, this is fundamental for external rotation. And about the treatment, uh, the excessive use in a classic training um, is important to understand that uh, is important that the coach must correct any technical error in the mechanism of the stroke. It's very important to avoid that our athlete feel pain. And for example, if we use manual paddle and increase the stress of the shoulder and feel pain, uh, we, we have to, um, uh, to do some change in uh, uh, the training of our athlete. For example, about progression method for return to sport, um, the uh, swimmer and the coach and the trainer and the physiotherapist need to understand that the athlete should progress slowly is very important. And that we can add tools, for, ex for example, pool boy or our type of tools. If our athlete um, can start the movement and during the movement doesn't have pain is very important. And um, 
so we can do some progression table is only an example. We start with a warm up. Warm up is an important phase about uh, the training of our athlete. And we can add uh, some drills. Uh, uh, and we, we, it's important to understand that um, we have to control working load and uh, about uh, uh, specifically volume and intensity is important uh, uh, to assess them and uh, to control these two type of uh, um, aspect. And uh, it's very important to um, have a specific uh, criteria to uh, progress uh, uh, the training. It's important that uh, a coach and the trainer and the physiotherapist uh, um, speak uh, each other's uh, to understand if uh, the athlete uh, during the season have some problem. And uh, now we can see uh, only an example uh, about uh, uh, some uh, exercise. We start, for example, with pendulum exercise, as we know for subacromial impingement, for example. And then uh, we have a progress to recovery the range of motion, for, for example, flexion, or internal and external rotation. And we can do different exercises. This is only an example. We have a, a lot of uh, possibility to recover this type uh, of uh, movement. And uh, the stretching on posterior capsule that our athlete can do by himself uh, or with manual therapy, uh, we have uh, so above. We have different position to stretch the posterior capsule. And it's very important to stretch the pectoralis, uh, the muscles is very important because it um, can lead to some uh, problem as a uh, subacromial impingement. It also, it's important, uh, um, for example, uh, do a work to strengthening uh, the muscle scapula stabilizer. So we can see uh, some typical exercise that uh, uh, we do with uh, the swimmer. Uh, prone horizontal abduction um, and external rotation is another type of exercise uh, that uh, we can do with our um, uh, athlete. Or for example, uh, we start with the sideline external rotation and uh, for uh, rotati rotator calf muscles. And it's important to progress in intermediate phase with a, a complex exercise. We start with a, a isolated exercise and we finish with a, a, with a, a complex exercise that involved all of the uh, muscle change. So this is very important to understand. This is important that our athlete have the control of the movement. If our athlete have the control of the movement, uh, we can create uh, uh, with the brain, with uh, our fantasy, we can create uh, a lot of exercise. Uh, there is only a type of exercise, what, but we have to do, uh, we have to understand that uh, we, we have uh, to uh, understand that uh, it's important to increase slowly uh, the progression of the workload. And um, also it's important to do uh, prevent prevention. For example, this is a, a typical exercise uh, uh, to increase the range of motion, specifically to external rotation. This is a, a specific problem of the swimmer. So this is a, only uh, an example of, uh, uh, for example, exercise. And uh, uh, myofascial work is another important work. For example, our athlete can uh, uh, put, uh, for example, um, uh, a ball uh, under the muscles and um, can, uh, uh, for example, simulate the uh, for example, the stroke uh, is um, a very important exercise because during this exercise, our athlete uh, feel pain, but is not a, a is a, a good pain because uh, relax the muscles at the same time and can increase the range of motion. Another example, for example, is myofascial work in the pectoralis muscles. And it's important to stabilize, uh, for example, the harder shoulder at the same time do this exercise, uh, for example, to simulate uh, the stroke, for example. It's only uh, an example that uh, uh, we can do with our athlete. Um, it's a possibility to training uh, to do uh, a preventive 
uh, exercise is very important to understand. This is important that our athlete does um, have a personal um, exercise. Is a, we have to customize the exercise with our athlete. Okay, um, I've finished. Thank you for your attention. If you have some question, uh, I'm here. I don't know if uh, there is some question. Thank you so much, Luca. Too bad your webcam uh, does not turn on. Maybe it's a bug of Zoom. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, if you have uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to drop it in the Q&A box or in the chat, or simply raise your hand and you can also talk to us. I see uh, Haresh Kumar with the hands uh, raised up and also Elvis Safari. Uh, if, if that was not a mistake, please write in the chat that you would like to uh, have a uh, a conversation with us, and I'll give you the possibility to talk to us as well. I see two raised hands. And if you feel a bit shy, just feel free to talk to us in the in the text box here below. Let's see. Thank you again, Luca, for the for the presentation. Thank you, Lara. This uh, opportunity, I think that is a, a very important aspect uh, and that is important to share this um, type of exercise with a physiotherapist uh, all around the world because it's important that uh, uh, we do this, the same exercise because um, if uh, all the physiotherapists uh, have a, a guideline, it's important, uh, uh, for example, um, for you, and a guideline and an exercise that is important to share with a uh, physiotherapist of a other country. So, if you, in our, uh, for example, if um, in this uh, webinar uh, there is uh, some uh, physiotherapist that work with a uh, uh, swimmer, it's important to share this type of exercise. Yeah. Um... Mikey Corbett says, thank you from Central Arkansas, United States. Hi. Hi, Mikey. Thank you for hey, being Mark. here. Uh, did you, if you can um, uh, ask to Mikey if, um, for example, do this type of exercise uh, in the United States. It's uh, <laughs> interesting to understand if you have a, a similar uh, exercise, for example. Yeah, maybe we can give him... Uh, he can talk to us if he wants to. Hi, Mike. Mikey, yeah. I don't know. Oh, hi. Hello. Mika. Mike, hi. Thank you for being here today. How are you? Hi, Mickey. Thank you. Those are very similar exercises that we use every day with swimmers, volleyball players, baseball players, all overhead athletes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because some some problem is uh, uh, in common with the uh, uh, overhead athlete, so he's uh, is correct uh, uh, that uh, we, a lot of exercise and uh, common with this, uh, di different sports uh, because uh, the shoulder is one, but uh, in overhead uh, sport we have uh, a lot of time the same problem. Yeah. So let's see if there are any more questions. We do have a question from Gloria Sandu. What about in the first stages, uh, reducing inflammation with electrotherapy, like say car or laser? So how, what, how do you feel about that, Luca, about um, reducing inflammation in the first stages with um, yeah. electrotherapy? Yeah. Yeah, about uh, the electrotherapy, but about the physical therapy, uh, there is not much evidence. But uh, for example, about uh, some type of, uh, uh, for example, uh, for example, with um, shock waves therapy uh, that increase <laughs> when uh, uh, do the therapy, but reduce the uh, pain uh, after um, two days. 
And uh, also with the uh, high intensity laser is another possibility. Um, about uh, laser, I think that is a, a better way to reduce the pain. Uh, Tekar, I think that is uh, uh, better to use Tekar in uh, the subacute phase and not this acute phase because uh, increase the, the uh, for example, the temperature uh, is possible that, that increase the pain. So uh, I, I prefer to use laser. And uh, she yeah, has yeah, also that, that therapy. Yeah, yeah. She's saying that uh, she's saying we work very well with that in line in the line in the first yeah. stages. Sorry, and also with the yeah. uh, cryotherapy. Yeah, yeah, cryotherapy because um, uh, uh, decrease, for example, pain is another way to dec decrease the pain. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, I think that is a. Uh, uh, a good way uh, to decrease the pain uh, of the, the athlete. And Mika, uh, I'm sorry if I uh, talk to you again, but since you're here with us, maybe we can have a conversation. What do you think um, about what Gloria just asked? So reducing inflammation with electrotherapy and also uh, using uh, cryotherapy. What do you think? Like, what is your experience with that? Yeah, we use that regularly along with um, dry needling and cupping and yeah. other interventions. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the same, but the dry needling, <laughs> yeah, for example, dry needling is a very, very important uh, uh, therapy, but in Italy uh, uh, can do dry needling only the doctor. So we have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, it's different in different countries. So, yeah. yeah, let's see if there are any other questions. Mika, do you have any other questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tekar, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. With Tekar, we can use the thermic setting. Yeah, I think it's, it's correct. It's correct, Gloria. But I think if we have, the, for example, the possibility to use laser and Tekar, I prefer to use laser. Because uh, uh, we can uh, uh, do a specific treatment in specific part. Because um, a lot of time uh, our athletes have a pain in a specific anatomical part. So as you know, Tekar work not in a specific part, but uh, is a, a very important part of the anatomical region. So I think that laser is uh, better to use. But uh, I think uh, that is correct uh, that Tekar we can use Tekar with a thermic setting. So, yeah. Yeah. It's we have another question, Luca, from Elvis. Um, he's asking, what are the warning signs of shoulder injury? Yeah, is um, important. Yeah, very For critical example. signs of... And Gloria is saying, yeah. thank is you, it... Dr. Luca. <laughs> thank you, thank you Gloria. Gloria, for the is question. <laughs> Yeah, very, very interesting question. And I think that uh, uh, physical therapy device, uh, device is, is an important instrument that uh, have to know uh, physiotherapist. And uh, is important uh, that uh, uh, when we share this uh, knowledge, it's important to understand that uh, we have to create guidelines uh, about the use of physical therapist devices. Some a lot of problem. We have this problem that uh, different, uh, uh, for example, application can create different problem. So it's important to share this knowledge. Yeah. And about yeah. warm uh, sign, I think that, um, uh, uh, for example, uh, about the shoulder shoulder in injuries, uh, I think that uh, one is important to assess the pain. The pain is the key. And, but uh, before we can assess some change uh, uh, about, for example, movement that uh, the athlete uh, do during swimming. So it's important to speak with the coach because uh, as we can, uh, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, so in the presentation, if our athlete uh, change something uh, or during the swimming is important uh, to look this, uh, to pay attention if, you, if our athlete has this, uh, change. Uh, for example, um, if uh, our athlete uh, uh, and an early sign is a possible injuries, is a dropped elbow during the recovery phase in the freestyle stroke, for example, 
Oh, for example, if our athlete uh, during the, the strength assessment uh, have some problem or a reduction of serratus anterior muscles, so it is important to assess uh, the strength, the range of motion, and uh, look if our at athlete uh, during the swimming uh, changed something. Uh, so it is important to have a baseline assessment. It's important to have a comparison uh, during the season. So it is important to assess the, in the baseline our athlete. Thank you, Luca. We have another question from Corinne. Um, she's asking if you have any tips for shoulder pain uh, with young swimmers with growth spurts, uh, Scatti. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, any with, tips? Um, Maybe she. Uh, I don't know, Corinne, if you want to also participate with audio, if you want to talk to us a little bit further, we are um, very open to that as well. But I guess we understood your questions, right, Luca? So she would like to have some tips for uh, shoulder pain in young swimmers that has a lot of uh, spurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I think that is, for example, the problem is uh, that we grow sport, is we have the problem to apply, for example, uh, some physical therapy. Uh, so we have this problem. I think that um, any tips uh, is uh, possible to, um, I think that physical therapy exercise is the key. Um, for example, uh, uh, increase the strength uh, of some movement. And uh, it's important that when increase the strength, uh, uh, strengthening the muscles uh, uh, scapular, for, for example, uh, is another way uh, to um, in, um, increase, uh, um, for example, uh, um, the, uh, the skill of, of our athlete, uh, specifically if uh, he's a young uh, swimmer, because uh, as we know, uh, in the uh, growing swimmer, the problem is not to uh, uh, increase this, the strength, but it's important to uh, have a, a control about the increase of the strength. So I think that, uh, uh, for example, physical therapy is our size and the corrective is our size is the key um, in this type of a problem. So the tips uh, can do, for example, or can be, uh, for example, um, um, rotator cuff is our size and muscle or scapular is our size. Yeah. Corinne, again, feel free to talk if you would like to. We are very open to that. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Corinne. Yeah. Hello. You? Sorry. I couldn't, find the today. I couldn't find the unmute button. Okay. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, thank you for the presentation. That's so interesting. Um, so I'm a physical therapist um, involved in a small club, and I'm dealing with a lot of young swimmers in you know between uh -huh. 10 and 16 and they obviously have a lot of growth spurt and many of them they do panic when they start wow. to have pain yeah. Yeah. Um, around yeah. the shoulder and they think this is it this is the, i should stop so yeah i mean i understand the bone will grow faster than the muscles and lots of physical therapy to lengthen the muscle and uh, strengthening yeah. so i was wondering if there was any tips but that's that's very you know, reassuring to keep doing the rotator cuff exercises and, and the strengthening and and also help them to de 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 catastrophize that as well. So just to reassure them yeah. that it's going to be just for a short time, uh, that kind of pain. Yeah. Um, but also what I wanted to mention is being in a small club, they do very little uh, warm up and very little cool down. Um. So uh, yeah, it's a problem. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a problem that the warm up. Uh, and the, a lot of athletes have the problem that warm up uh, think that is not important. So it's, yeah. a, it's a very, this is an error, a very important error. Yeah, and uh, very often it's because of due, due, due with with time. But but um, yeah, I'm trying to in, make sure they have at least ten minutes at the beginning and and the end. To, uh, to do these little exercises just just for them to become more aware of of their shoulder stability before they jump into the water yeah yeah 
That's a good idea. Corinne, where are you calling from? Well, where are you joining from? Uh, from the South uh, England, but uh, with a French accent. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. trying to figure your accent out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you do work in a small, um, like, so you do uh, some physical assistance in this small club of uh, young swimmers. Is that your main? Yes. Yes. So I'm just at the first uh, contact if the swimmers would have any um problems and they come and see me first and if i can deal with with uh, any physical therapy then i will and if it's beyond my uh my capacity then i will um you know send them to to physiotherapist or to any any other professional if i feel it's relevant because very yeah. often is is that rotator cuff stability is that shoulder stability that needs to be um to be dealt with but that was great there's lots of amazing exercises in your presentation yeah. that we can use. Thank you. Thank you. Because in, in Italy, we have a problem that uh, is a fact that is not dangerous to train in strength. But the problem is uh, to uh, understand, not the physiotherapist, but that is important is this fact, uh, understand this fact, uh, the doctor, because sometimes we have the problem that the doctor think that in a swimmer with the gross problem have the problem that is dangerous to train the strength. It's not true. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stopping is not good. They have to keep keep going in the water. Yeah. Is that what, uh, Luca, is that the, the, the key then? Just keep on training and keep on going into the water and swim? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, um, we, we have some uh, study that um, uh, uh, show that uh, um, we can uh, have uh, a link, uh, we can uh, have a transfer uh, of the strength that uh, uh, we're training, for example, in a land environment. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, uh, we can, uh, for example, uh, have, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, an increase of strength during the, uh, for example, the stroke. Uh, so it's important uh, that our athlete uh, in specific part of the season uh, do um, an increase of the strength. So it's very important to understand that uh, we can also training our athlete uh, with, the, for example, if we want to increase uh, uh, the strength, uh, we, uh, for example, in a water environment, we can use uh, tools. But the problem with the tools is that sometime uh, our athlete, uh, during the use of the tools, uh, uh, may appear to the pain. So it's important to understand that the, the strength and strengthening our athlete uh, is the only way is uh, uh, training our athlete uh, in the land environment. He, he, we don't have an, a, a, another way. That's interesting. Well, Corinne and Mika, thank you for joining the conversation. Thank you. And Thank you. there are going to be many more uh, webinars in the future. This is our first one in uh, English language. Rivelo is very big at the moment in Italy with these clinical webinars, and we are trying to expand to many other countries. So uh, we hope that you enjoyed uh, this session. Luca, I don't see any other questions. Um, so I guess that uh, this, is, this is it. Uh, I've, I've, I'm reading some comments. Uh, Jane, Jane Lee says, uh, thank you for the brilliant talk. Uh, uh, Seed, thank you. Jason Bianchi, thank you for the great webinar. Dr. Luca found it very interesting. Uh, maybe we have more questions. Oh, they're coming all at once. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I have Alexis. He's saying, I am a sports osteopath, not a physio. Uh, we use this protocol, yeah. especially functional stability, coordination, and strength. How old injuries slash athletes are different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very are different. Are saying, uh, however, injuries... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. Yes, because of osteopathic, osteopathic vision, I'm, I'm also an osteopath. Uh, uh, therapist so uh, sorry Luca it, once treat... again Alexis feel free to to talk to us if you would like to just yeah like everybody else I also uh, gave you access to the mic 
So if you would like to talk to us and explain your questions a little bit better, or would like to say something. Yeah, uh, I can hear you now. Hi, Alexis. Hi, hi. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Hi. That's a hi. So, so you, you own a, a sports osteopath as well, yes? Yeah. Yeah, so what we, I was we have, saying is, is ultimately- We share this uh, problem. Yes, <laughs> I think what I found interesting is I really discovered to work with physio really interesting simply because we have one uh, different approach. Uh, we usually stay away from protocols simply because yeah, all injuries and all athletes which come through your doors, they all differ. So you cannot fit everything in one box. Uh, so ultimately we, I intend now to work more functionally and to uh, yeah. recover full joint uh, potentials. And ultimately, I mean, I don't address too much mobility because mobility is quite easy to achieve, but ultimately to focus on stability, yeah. maintain that is a lot more challenging. Um, yeah. so my, not, my question I would be interested to ask you is how, how much do you think all technology now available to you in terms of uh, measuring anything seems to improve your general result compared to non-access to technology, which is very much what osteopaths do. We don't use much uh, technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Do you think, um, do you think you speed up the recovery? Yeah, I, um, I, I want to reply to you in two ways. The first, that uh, um, osteopath and physiotherapist have different approach to the problem. For example, as you know, uh, for example, uh, as you, you know, with um, if our athlete have a, a problem of the shoulder, uh, for example, osteopath can uh, link the liver and the shoulder. The physiotherapist uh, don't have this link. This is another way. But uh, for example. Uh, what is the link between uh, uh, osteopath assessment and physiotherapy assessment is, for example, if our athlete increase or decrease the range of motion, so technology can create this link, uh, for example. And um, it's important that, uh, for example, physiotherapists uh, uh, have the habits, <laughs> for example, to have uh, an assessment of, of uh, all uh, the component of the body because, because it's important. But the same way, I think that also the osteopath can do it because it can link and can speak with the other professional, for example, as a physiotherapist or doctor. And I think if they want to speak the same language, they, for example, in this BioBit device, for example, uh, is a, a, a key to, in which uh, our um, uh, we can speak all the same language. For this reason, I think that uh, technology is important because we can assess our athlete in the baseline and uh, uh, during the season, and um, we can have, uh, for example, comparison uh, between uh, uh, doctor, physiotherapist, uh, osteo osteopath, uh, and all uh, the component that uh, are involved in the training of our athlete. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Alexis. I don't know if Alexis, uh, you, Thank you. you think the same. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I mean, it got to be a common, uh, common direction. Hence, why I really like to work now in multidisciplinary team when everyone's bring his own specific expertise, so yeah. to speak. And I think he works really well this way. Yeah. Thank you, Alexis. My pleasure. Thank you. We are seeing also, Luca, uh, many thanks from Poland. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight with us. It was a pleasure to be the host of this webinar. Thank you so much, Luca, for your presentation. Um, we It was a, quite a success because I'm reading the comments and they are all very satisfied. Um, I don't know, would you like to say something else, Luca, before closing this uh, session? Yes, that, uh, hello everyone.
<laughs> and I think that uh, uh, is important that uh, we sharing this um, uh, knowledge is very important. So I think that is uh, the first uh, the first part of, um, uh, for example, um, the first webinar that uh, yeah. we can do together. Yeah, the first webinar that, uh, abroad, right? Is the first webinar yeah, in yeah, English language. It, it, we are very excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> I want and to, I did, we all hope that you I enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed very. And uh, I think that uh, for the next uh, webinar, uh, I want to see Corina, Alexis. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Mika. It's important. It's important. Because I'm now reading a comment all these. Uh, Thank you for the presentation. Good to hear there will be more webinars in the future. Well, that's a great yeah. comment. Yeah. Well, we're now, also very excited. Now we are, we are fans. We are fans. Now we're also. You are my guest yeah. in Italy. Now in Italy is not a, a, a <laughs> we don't is not a good idea now. But uh, I think in the future <laughs> you can yeah. come come here without any problem. Okay. Yes, they're all welcome to come see us at the Rivello and try buy a bit with us. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I will send yeah. this recording to everybody that participated to the webinar, and um, so you can watch it. Um, easily at home, we're probably going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to send you the direct link to YouTube. So that in that way, it's even more easy. Okay, Luca, I think uh, we can wrap it up. That's a wrap. Thank you so much. Um, yes, everybody are writing. Thank you in the chat. Thank you from Hungary. Hi, Hungary. Then there's Poland. We had some England going on. That's great. Okay, thank you guys all for being Probably. here today. Once again, my name is Lara. I, I am the marketing specialist at Rivello. Um, well, and uh, we will see you next time. Uh, remember to check out our social media or website, rivellomove.com and all the social media platform on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you just have to find Rivello Move or at Move underscore international. Thank you so much and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.